Hey everyone, welcome back to Toto Santos. Today we're going to be building a nice complement to the distillery that we made last episode, taking inspiration not from San Juan, but from Mayaguez. We're going to be building a version of the Medalla Brewery. Let's go. <laughs> Medalla is a Puerto Rican brand of beer, and we have uh, their advertisements plastered pretty much all over the city. So I figured what better place to make their brewery than across from the equally as iconic Bacardi-inspired distillery. So we're going to end up having a town that basically just exists for the sole purpose of producing the island's alcohol. So I wanted to start with the main brewery building. Uh, I'm using this uh, grain elevator building because I thought it had... Uh, the right look, uh, just isolating the building portion of it and getting rid of the silos. Uh, so this is where all the main process of brewing is going to take place. So they're going to mill their grains, perform the mash, which is basically just uh, making tea out of the milled barley and extracting all that tasty sugar. And they would also perform the boil in here. So you take your tasty liquid, add some hops and boil it for about an hour. I'm going with a yellow color scheme to match the uh, Madaya brand. Uh, we're not rebranding it like we did with the distillery because we have these wonderful ads all over the city. So I wanted to stick with that color scheme. Uh, for the layout, I wanted to follow uh, the Google Earth reference that you saw before at the beginning of the episode fairly closely. And I'm pretty familiar with the process of brewing. I brew beer myself, but obviously not on a commercial scale. And I have to imagine there is a massive difference between home brewing and brewing this much beer at one time. So I tried to figure out what parts of the Google Earth references did what, but uh, it's probably not going to be perfect. But just like last episode, I tried to come up with uh, a purpose and a function for each of these elements that we're putting in here. So these tanks here over on the right, I added a blue stripe there because I figured that that would be where they keep all their water because obviously you need lots and lots of water to make beer. And uh, then we have a couple buildings here, which I'm thinking would just have to do with uh, heating up all this water because you need, also need a lot of energy put into this process. Uh, so there'll be some sort of uh, boiler or something like that. And then a couple of other tanks here as well, which would maybe hold uh, some of the various salts and chemicals that you use in this process. And whenever you're burning stuff, of course, you also need a, uh, a very industrial looking smokestack. Uh, you can't really tell here, but I have a vanilla uh, like smoke generator. Uh, there you go. Lifting that up to the top so that uh, looks nice and active. And I think that really uh, it adds almost like kind of a skyline to this little town that we're gonna surround uh, the brewery and the distillery with, which is kind of cool. Uh, they have a little area for delivering all those chemicals and salts and stuff I was talking about. And uh, there's a truck currently performing some sort of delivery there. And then we have all these pipes running over from the main building and heading over to these tanks. These are uh, the most important part of the process, which is fermentation. Uh, the ones in the reference are quite tall and skinny. I believe that's because oxygen is usually pretty bad for uh, the flavor of beer. So you want to have as little exposure to air as possible. So you get these nice tall tanks. And maybe they've had uh, some expansion over time. So they had the original small ones over here, these six, and then they've added in these bigger ones more recently for some expansion. And uh, I couldn't really stand just having the pipes run by. I wanted to actually have them have access or at least appear to have access to the tank. So we have a set of pipes running perpendicular uh, from the main line over into the tanks. Then the final step is this warehouse here. Of course, we have to rebrand with this billboard, uh, but this is where the finished beer would go. It would be filtered and then carbonated and finally bottled, canned, whatever, and then shipped out from there in these uh, yellow trailers. I tried making some custom Medaya ones with uh, PO, but it just didn't really look that good. So I decided just to go with the uh, yellow one and not worry about branding too much. There's also this cute little office building attached, and that would be uh, just general administration and quality control, that kind of stuff. The functionality of this place is going to be pretty similar to the distillery last episode. So we have this uh, big blue warehouse that I forgot to mention. Uh, that is storing crops, which of course are going to be processed into beer. Uh, and then we also have a warehouse block clipped in there storing glass. Uh, now, last episode, I mentioned the lemonade factory block, which uh, essentially translates crops and glass into uh, commercial goods. I put one of those in the distillery, and then I also am putting one here as well in the main bottling plant. And that's going to represent all this uh, beer being completed and then shipped out on the trucks that spawn there. I also uh, put some industrial and office blocks uh, just to generate some jobs and a little bit of extra traffic.
There's this very weird uh, structure that runs uh, between two areas of the Medaya Brewery, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out what it is. I assume it's like some sort of conveyor belt or maybe a walkway. I don't see why you would need a walkway here, but uh, I thought it was kind of cool. So we're going to try to do something like that here, even though I have absolutely no idea what it does. So I'm using this uh, nice open air overpass that I've used uh, as a pedestrian overpass in many parts of the city because it looks kind of cool. Uh, but we're going to do that here, sharpen the corners with node controller because it looks a little strange to have them curved at those uh, shallow angles like that. And then uh, on one end, I'm going to clip it into the main warehouse that stores all the grain and hops and uh, glass and stuff. And then on the other end, just add a little building here uh, to cover up the blank end of the walkway. Now, uh, because I'm assuming that this is some sort of conveyor belt, uh, we can't just have it open air. That's probably not a good idea. So I'm using these prefab walls, uh, running them out here with IMT and changing them to our usual yellow color theme. To emphasize that this place has expanded over the years, as I mentioned before with the fermentation tanks, I wanted to show that there were a couple uh, surfaces to the uh, driveway or parking lot or whatever you want to call it here. So we have uh, these nice old decals, which I think are meant to be for airport aprons. Uh, maybe we'll get to use those uh, for their actual purpose later in the series. But anyway, I wanted to represent that uh, there was an older portion over here with those, and then there's a newer portion with these uh, plain pavement slabs on the other side where they've expanded. I don't know. I find it very satisfying how the uh, pavement and the older concrete slabs uh, line up at least a little bit in certain parts. I'm also going to get some wear decals in here. I'm not sure this was a good idea because these slab things, even though I turned them into POs, are technically decals. Um, so I think there's going to be some Z fighting that we get there, you know, and when, when you uh, stack two decals together, uh, they start fighting, trying to uh, be the ones that get seen. It's kind of like uh, social media. Anyway, I don't think that's going to last. I'm probably going to have to remove those stained decals, but for whatever reason, they weren't uh, having that flashing problem when I was doing the build, but we'll see. I think it'll be a sad day that we had an episode of Toto Santos without uh, some nice trees. And uh, some of our Medaya billboards, of course, we need to brand this place up so people know uh, who runs this town. And uh, that's uh, just about it for the brewery. So now we need to get to work on that town that I've been promising for like three episodes now. Uh, also, you might notice uh, that some of our roads are a little darker than usual. I had some sort of mod update uh, that seemed to uh, reset some of the color settings I had, and I couldn't for some reason fix them right away. Uh, but the problem seemed to resolve itself. Uh, so we'll go a couple episodes with these darker uh, roads than usual, but uh, they should return fairly quickly. Anyway, we're doing a pretty uh, basic road layout that you're probably familiar with if you've uh, watched any of the other episodes of Toto Santos, uh, but I'm imagining that this is a fairly recent development this town is, or at least uh, the bulk of it is, as the brewery and the distillery, uh, and I suppose the uh, island recreational park that we made have all uh, grown up and become more popular and expanded. And uh, that has pretty much been the sole reason for this road network, all the houses that we're going to put down, and uh, the little commercial area we're going to put down as well to pop up in this location in particular, uh, because there's not really much else going on out here. I decided that uh, instead of creating a new town, it seemed like it was maybe start cramping things up a little bit too much. I decided just to ha expand the town of Esperanza that we have over on the coast to this area as well. So this uh, kind of whole area along the shoreline is the town of Esperanza. We're going to extend some of our utilities, and uh, I figured while we were here doing this stuff fairly close to the edge of the map, I would just go ahead and do some very basic detailing uh, to finish off that corner of the map in particular. I also extended these uh, smaller power lines to go down this main avenue, this stretch of highway here that technically I guess would be an avenue going through the center of town, and uh, terminating it here because they don't really need uh, this power line to go anywhere else because there's no development. I tried putting down this transformer, and it didn't let me. I thought maybe it's because it was not on the road network, um, but I eventually just gave up and turned it into a PO to get the, the visual aspect of it there and uh, moved on. I thought I might as well detail this beach while I was over here. So just like uh, episode 66, where we made that uh, kind of nice hidden beach along the bay, uh, we have this grass road that runs down here, this little parking lot, and I tried putting a people generator down to try to get some people driving down that road and it wouldn't go down. And I realized that uh, we were finally at the building limit.
I think about 10 to 20% of the buildings contributing to our building limit problem are these small single family homes that we have all over Toto Santos. So my first thought was to, well, I'll just turn a bunch of them into procedural objects and that'll solve our problem. And we can even fix uh, the population that we're gonna lose by putting in some of these residential blocks. Well, there is a small problem with that, which is that uh, anything you turn into a procedural object doesn't have an LOD. So when you zoom out, it just disappears. Now, of course you can change the render distance so you can view these things from farther away, but it's showing the full resolution model and texture, which is horrible for performance. So that's something uh, I'm gonna keep in my back pocket, but I'm not gonna do it for the whole city because otherwise we're gonna get this, which looks terrible. I also went over to our ugly suburbs at the end of the map and decided to up the number of people who can live there uh, in a smaller number of buildings. So instead of having a few dozen or maybe even hundred of those vanilla apartment buildings there, we have just a few of these residential blocks instead. But none of that was even close to enough to fix our problem. So I thought I would be uh, clever and go into the asset editor. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me preparing these, but it probably doesn't matter in the end, because even though these are blocks of like 20 buildings, each one of them counts as a sub-building, and all those count toward the building limit, unfortunately. So that, I thought I was being clever, reducing our uh, number of used buildings by about 20-fold, but unfortunately that didn't work. But I still did figure out that it was a lot easier to build neighborhoods with blocks like this rather than plopping one at a time. Who would have guessed? Another thing I tried was going around the map and turning some unique and smaller areas of buildings into POs uh, because we're not going to miss these as much when I zoom out. And uh, anyway, if I have like one unique building with a high render distance, uh, I'm not too worried about that. That works fine, but uh, the volume isn't there. Uh, there just aren't enough of these in the city to make a difference uh, with our problem, although we are making small amounts of progress. Eventually, I settled on something that I think was the best way to go about this, which is to look down at this setting and find it, which allows you to see how many of a certain asset you've placed in your city. So what I did is I found the ones that had uh, the most of them that weren't going to be noticed if I turned them into POs. Um, so all those single family homes I was talking about, I'm not going to change most of those into POs. But these one by one shacks that I don't use that much, but I somehow have managed to put down a couple hundred of each, I'm going to turn those into POs. Now the next important step is that you can press this little map pin when you have an asset selected and it'll take you to the next instance of that asset. And that allows you to select it using the picker option of move it and you can select all of them on the map. Hit shift P or whatever your procedural object keybind is and it'll turn all of them into POs. Or uh, in certain cases like these one by one parking spots I just deleted all of them because we're not going to notice one by one parking spots disappearing in random corners of the city. It can feel a little bad psychologically deleting things that you've uh, carefully placed, but also uh, it just lags out whenever you turn hundreds and hundreds of things into a PO, or even when you delete hundreds and hundreds of things at the same time, uh, the game's pretty much gonna freeze for like five or 10 minutes. Uh, but I would just do that, <laughs> turn something into a PO, go do something else for a few minutes, and then I'll come back and the game's running just fine. And we have a few hundred extra buildings available to us. Okay, so now we're going to lay down a bit of basic infrastructure to connect the older area of town up with the new town that we're going to build. We just have a very simple two-way highway uh, running pretty much parallel to the freeway that's going to serve as a, a central road for the agricultural area that's uh, coming very soon, uh, maybe sooner than you think. And then I also uh, tentatively run the metro line over here, but we are actually uh, going to move that somewhere else. That's a story for another episode. Uh, the road network of this small town is very simple. It's just a few rectangles here and there, uh, but there are these little, uh, not quite cul-de-sacs, but just tips of road that stick out. And that's indicating where in the future, assuming this town continues to develop in a similar fashion, they're just gonna extend these roads out and zone for more homes to be built here. We have the first of two small commercial zones here for this town. I mean, there's really not that big of a population and uh, there's just a little bit of traffic that goes through here. So it's not gonna be a huge amount of commercial compared to some of the areas of town, but I did want to have uh, what you might expect in a small town like this, just a couple of restaurants, a shop, gas station, that sort of stuff, and parking, of course. 
And now the town itself, we're gonna make uh, extensive use of these new blocks of buildings that I put together, even though we're technically still eating into our building limit. I think with 5,000 to go, we're probably set to finish out the series. Uh, and of course, from now on, I'm overall going to be more careful with how I use buildings. So I think that combined with having uh, just overall more buildings available, we're gonna be able to make it just fine to the end of Todos Santos, as long as I don't go too crazy doing all these giant suburban developments like we've been doing. Uh, there still is a little bit of that to be done, but uh, again, another story for another episode. So because this town is in the vicinity of what's going to be our agricultural area and all our farms and everything, I wanted it to make more sense that there's land that's sort of in between that uh, is no longer used as farmland or never was used as farmland, but has also not yet been developed. So we have lots of open land like this filled with grass and trees and that kind of stuff. And it's been pruned to a certain degree and uh, just tamed so that it's prepared for development, but uh, there's no actual development yet. And uh, that, I think that's going to help us transition in between uh, these sorts of small towns and all the farms that we're going to build. And everything beyond this two-lane highway here is not going to be developed. We're just going to have forest. And uh, that's just going to help transition us from development to the edge of the map, which, as I've talked about before, is a very awkward thing and just kind of annoying to deal with. So we're just going to have a completely wild area here. Although I did think it was kind of cool to have an additional hill that's a little bit more prominent than the other ones. And there's some sort of communications tower up there. So we're just gonna run a little service road up there and uh, clear out those trees. And I thought that was just kind of a nice, cool monument that you could see uh, as you're driving out of town in that direction. Or if you're heading into town, you see that and you know you're about to hit the developed part of Todos Santos. <music> I tried doing some uh, sort of fancy detailing with this metro line here uh, with a few layers of grass that kind of taper up from the rail into the uh, woods that we're going to build in a second. But uh, like I said, I ended up having to scrap this whole part of the metro line and reroute it elsewhere. But I think it does kind of uh, show you what I'm thinking here with how all these networks and stuff have uh, been fit into the landscape here and all the forest that uh, was there long before any rail or road was here. I wanted this uh, particular area of forest to look very dense, except for these occasional kind of marshy openings in the woods, because we're going to have a very wide river that kind of meanders through this area. Um, the one we have right now is kind of small and uh, not very realistic. We're going to adjust that in a future episode. Uh, but anyway, I wanted this really dense and verdant forest just to show the sort of life that has sprung up around this river. And there happened to be this one area of woods that was so dense or uh, so marshy in certain parts that they just weren't really able to develop it. So it's just remained more or less untouched even to this day. Uh, for these areas of land that are boxed in by roads that uh, seem like they're gonna imminently be developed, we have uh, mostly open areas of grass with some with some denser areas and uh, then some clusters of trees here and there as well. As I mentioned a couple episodes ago, we're doing uh, mostly our low poly tree brush setting uh, painting those all over and then putting a few of those Asai palm clusters in because they just look so good and they really, um, at least up close, they really elevate uh, those low poly trees and uh, they kind of make it look like an actual forest, at least more than just the low poly trees by themselves. <music> So that's it for the brewery, filling in the surrounding area and dealing, at least for now, with the building limit. Uh, I am very quickly going to make some extra hills out here in the outskirts uh, and cover them with a whole bunch of trees. Uh, but that's something we're going to spend the next couple episodes doing in uh, extreme detail. So I don't want to do too much of that. Don't want to spoil anything. But other than that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this episode of Toto Santos. And I can't wait to see you on the next one, which I promise is going to be a nice one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.